You've heard my story, and if you haven't, I can tell you later, but today we're going to focus on your story. How the Holy Spirit is using you here at the Waikiki Beach Gathering. So you guys can open up your Bibles um, to 1 Corinthians 3, 4 through 15. 1 Corinthians 3, 4 through 15. And uh, so the Apostle Paul was a church planter, like the, probably the greatest church planter of all time. Um, greatest missionary of all time, besides Jesus, probably. And uh, this book, 1 Corinthians, is a letter that Paul wrote to this church he started in this city called Corinth. And he wrote this letter to address the issues they were having in their church. So let's check out what Paul was writing to them and what that means for us today, right here, right now. Um, so 1 Corinthians 3, 4 through 15. We'll go for the first couple of verses here. It says, For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not mere human beings? What, after all, is Apollos, and what is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe, as the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted this seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. So first we see that this is your church and this is God's church. So the Christians in Corinth, they were elevating the leadership of their pastor over the leadership of God. They loved their pastor, like Paul's preaching, Apollo's personality, whatever it was. They're building their church on their pastor more so than God. And like a house like built on a sand, pastors will fail. Like in verse 4, it says Paul and Apollos are just humans. But if we build our life and build our church on God, that's like building on a rock. And God's church built on a rock will stand forever. And guys, if the gathering is built on me, it will fail because I fail. I mess up. I'm human. But verse 5 says, like Paul and Apollos are only servants, just like all the rest of the people in their church. And God has assigned each of us to our own task. I planted the gathering. You guys are watering it, and God is making it grow. And here in our church, the Waikiki Beach Gathering, um, we are all God's servants, and God has assigned you to be right here and right now. Like, how are you using your spiritual gifts to advance God's kingdom here on earth? Like, the church is not best served where you all look up to me. No, the church is best served when we look to Jesus and we all pastor each other. Like, how can you use your spiritual gifts to love others right here in our church? So God has used you and many others that aren't here right now. The gathering has touched like thousands of people over these first four years to grow this church and to impact Waikiki and Honolulu with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So first, I'm just going to give a couple shout-outs here. I could go through all of you, but I just chose a couple of people for today because all of you made a big impact here. First, I'm going to go with uh, Steve. Steve has been coming to the gathering for three years. Uh, he, he first came... Uh, we're all wondering, why, why is he staying? <laughs> like, what's it, what does he see in us? And he, I guess he saw Jesus. And like one spring, his first spring here, we uh, had a 60 seconds with Steve segment uh, for every service. We had a 60 seconds apologetics training during the service. So we're really thankful for that, Steve. And we're thankful um, how you've protected this church from false teaching and how we have sharpened each other with theological discussions. The Zapatas, right here. Awesome family. Like, we have been friends for over six years now, and each one of you play an important role in who we are as a church. And your confidence in bringing your prayer request to God is contagious. And you encourage everyone else to share because you guys love to share. And we can count on you every week. And just thank you for that. Thank you for being who you are. And Raymond and Rebecca, um, Raymond found us on Meetup, and Raymond, you bring the party. Ever since you've come to the gathering, the party has not stopped. Like, you bring laughter, you bring joy, and you spread it to everyone around you, and you found a wife who is the exact same way. You guys bring so much joy into all of our lives. Thank you for bringing happiness to our church. Thank you for bringing Kokoro. And it's been exciting to see what God's been doing in your life, and we're excited for your future with your church family. And... Bethany has been coming to the gathering for two years now. She's um, mutual friends from UH Crew. And like Bethany said, uh, like this spring, 
she told us that she is going to make the gathering her home church. And you don't know how much that matters. That's, <laughs> and Bethany's made such a huge impact ever since then. And thank you for bringing such a strong woman leadership presence to the gathering and discipling people behind the scenes and helping out in every way that you do. John, Big Island John Albano, um, he found us on Instagram about two years ago. Uh, thank you for being real and authentic. Thank you for, like, your passion and your pursuit of Jesus brings all of us closer to Jesus. And in February, John told me that he's been co- going to a couple of different church since he became a Christian, but he sees his future here with our church. <laughs> That's so special when people say that. And this month, um, John started his master's degree. and He's pursuing a career in ministries. <laughs> Uh, Mackenzie, where are you at? Mackenzie, she is the cousin of my hairdresser in Minnesota. Um, when Mackenzie moved here um, in January, she told me that ever since she saw her Instagram posts when she was back in the mainland, she just knew she was called to be here in Hawaii at the gathering to serve with us. And Mackenzie, thank you for doing what you do, using your talents and your gifts to share the message of our church with everyone through your photos and videos. And thank you for being a leader and discipling people as a lifestyle. And Laura, you're very new to our church, like three months. Thank you for choosing us. And you made a huge impact in a very short time. Thank you for inviting so many friends. Like, it's amazing. And thank you for always spreading your excitement and your joy about Jesus. Like, you're so excited about Jesus, and we all know that, and you make us excited about Jesus. So these are just, like, seven people I chose, but if I did not mention you, you're still awesome. Um, And this is not Brady's church. This is your church. And ultimately, this is Jesus' church. Verse 7 says, So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything but only God who makes things grow. It's all about he, and he is greater than I. If you are a Christian, the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. Like, Holy Spirit is a person. God, person, lives inside of you. Can you even think about that? Like, we cannot wrap our minds around that. The Holy Spirit lives in you, and God changes other people's lives through you. Secondly, we see we have one purpose. If you guys look in your Bibles, in 1 Corinthians 3, 8 and 9, it says, The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose, and they will each be rewarded according to their own labor. For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. So like we have said today, and like we know, this is not just, this is not just the gathering's mission. This is God's mission to love Jesus, love others, and make disciples according to Jesus' word in the book of Matthew. This is why we do everything we do. And Jesus is calling you to share your faith without fear as a lifestyle every day. Not just when we gather as a church, but every day. Your mission is to love people and tell them about Jesus. And once someone is saved, our mission is to grow them from spiritual babies into spiritual adults. Because you be, want to be a fat baby. And verse 9 says, we are all co-workers. We are God's field. We are God's building. Okay, so we, right here, we are co-workers we are god's field and we are god's building so we work together on team jesus and god cultivates us breaking our hearts for what breaks his causing us to produce the fruits of the spirit making us ripe for the harvest so he can use us to harvest others matthew 9 36 to 38 says this is jesus and when jesus saw the crowds he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. And four years ago, I asked for this. Like, I cannot do this alone. Like, God, I need help. I want to make a difference here in Waikiki. Send me your workers for the harvest. And all of you guys are here right now. (laughs) And thank you for being here right now. Like, you are here for a purpose. It's God's purpose. Like we are the workers and we are co-workers. I am not above you. We are on the same team at the same level. We are co-workers being sent out all over Oahu, Waikiki, Honolulu to share the message of Jesus. Like we are God's building and the church is the people. And we don't need a building because God is building his 
life inside of you. He's building your heart. And our body is a temple for the Holy Spirit. Temple's a building, you're a building. We don't need a building. Here in the gathering, we have uh, connect groups. Who's in the connect group here? All right, so we have two right now, and we're starting a bunch more in January. And in connect groups, this is where the life of the church happens. Like we gather for Bible study, to encourage each other, to make friends, to hang out other times, just to have lots of fun. And then on Sundays, we gather here. And then last Friday night, the last Friday night of each month, we have our worship and testimony night. That's when these connect groups come together for the big group. And everything we do in connect groups and at the gathering here, the purpose is for loving Jesus, loving others, and making disciples. And the Holy Spirit is breaking all the boxes with his love, and God is using you. Third, we see Jesus is the main thing. Uh, so if you want to follow along in the Bible, uh, 1 Corinthians 3, 10 through 15. 1 Corinthians 3, 10 through 15. It says, By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to the light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, even though only as one escaping through the flames. That's deep, yeah? So if you follow, if you follow the gathering on Instagram, um, you, you saw the memories we posted in our Instagram stories, and you've seen just how organic this church plant has been. Like, the, in, the first six months, we listened to music on a Bluetooth speaker because we didn't have any musicians. So we praised Jesus through the Bluetooth speaker. Uh, the first year, we did not have chairs. The first two and a half years, we met in a circle. The first three and a half years, we used PD's bump box for our sound system. Like, this has been so fun. It's, it's very organic. And um, some of you have been here for, like, all of it. Some of you are new here. But there's been so many people that have made the gathering who it is today and have made what's happening happen. Like, you guys know... Some people that have moved on, they're alive still, but they've moved on. Uh, Jace, Sydney, Military Jake, Hope Stephenson, Justin, Mystic, Imani. Like these people helped grow the gathering, and we're thankful for them too. We have planted seeds and trained and equipped people to go and serve wherever God takes them in life. And everyone has a story, and all of you have a story, and you're a part of this big story. We're a part of a bigger story of all the churches across the world. We're a part of God's story. And if this is your third Sunday or your third year, I'm so thankful that you are here, and we are doing this together. Um, in verse 10, Paul says, By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder, and someone else is building on it, but each one should build with care. Yeah, like Jenga or something, you know, like build with care. You don't want to tip this over. So like four years ago, I planted this church, like by God's grace. Like I'm not super special. Like you guys could probably do it too. But all of you are building on what's been built and we need to build with care. Um, as the gathering grows, we need to be careful that Jesus is the main thing. Verse 11 says, For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. So as Christians, it's often easy for us to put other things as a priority over God. Like, for example, like, I am not the main thing. Um, being real is not the main thing. The sound system is not the main thing. Beachy vibes are not the main thing. Like, it's not about the followers, the popularity, the glitz and the glam. The church is growing, which is awesome. If we ever get a fog machine, remind me of this sermon. Jesus is the main thing. It says on verse 12 through 15, gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, and straw, they're all good things. Just like, I, I think I'm a good thing maybe. The sound system's a good thing. Being real is a good thing. The beach is a good thing. But all these things point to the main thing, which is, which is Jesus. The beach is not our savior. I am not your savior. Jesus is our savior. And that's the message we are sharing. 
we do otherwise, we are leading people astray. Jesus is number one. And verse 15 says, if we focus on these things, like if you focus on other things, we'll still be saved. But we'll be saved as if escaping through the flames of hell. So I don't want that, you know, like when I'm going to heaven, I don't want to be burnt to my feet, you know. You'll still be saved, but we experience life to the fullest here on earth by keeping Jesus number one. And it says you will have rewards in heaven when you follow Jesus here on earth. As a church, we can thrive, not just survive. And let's not barely escape. Let's be consumed by the Holy Spirit because he's an all-consuming fire. Like, let's not be lukewarm because God wants us to full send into what he has for us. And let's build our church on Jesus and nothing else. We are helpless sinners in need of a Savior. And John 14, 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Our Savior's name is Jesus. He is the only way. And sharing the love of Jesus is what we do all the time. Bringing many, as many people to Jesus, to heaven as we can while we're here on earth and building God's kingdom here as in heaven. So in conclusion, um, like four years ago, what we have today was only a dream. And you guys are a part of this dream. And this is literally a dream come true. And if Jesus is your savior, this dream continues forever. Isn't that sweet? This is never going to end. Um, these, four, these first four years have been awesome, and I literally want to do this the rest of my life. And guess what? The best is still yet to come. I've seen God move the mountains, and I believe he will do it again. This is just the beginning. And I heard a quote. It says, uh, past thinking churches raise up monuments. Forward thinking churches raise up missionaries. So let's take some time to reminisce of the past, but let's look and focus on the future. I like uh, Elevation Church's mission statement. It says, see what God can do through you. You are the future of the Waikiki Beach Gathering. Let's step out in faith, and God will do it again. Or maybe for the first time. There's so much that hasn't happened yet. This is just the beginning. Exit your comfort zone, and let's go on this ride. Let's go on this adventure together. This is your church, and God is using you. And I see a church that is meeting here at Waikiki Beach until Jesus returns. I see a church of 200 people right here praising Jesus. I see a church planting multiple beach gatherings all across Oahu. I see a church saving souls every single day through the simple gospel of Jesus Christ. I see a church of disciples making disciples through the power of the Holy Spirit. And I see a church creating the most real authentic community on this side of heaven. And this church is the Waikiki Beach Gathering. The church is the people. And let's do this together. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3, 5-7 through 7 says, What after all is Apollos? What is Paul? Only servants through whom you came in to believe, as the Lord has assigned each to his task. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. God is everything. Amen? All right.